So it's not immediately obvious why the Department of Health, which concentrates on health in England, uh, is running a call on international development. There are kind of three reasons. There's a narrow reason, which was uh, the Treasury uh, in the UK gave us money to give do stuff in international development, and therefore we have to spend it well. But there's a much wider um, reason, which is uh, international health is one of the areas uh, that is going incredibly well in international development. I mean, the, the change in international health over the last 15 to 20 years has been quite spectacular, uh, or po almost all positive. And that's driven very, very firmly by research. Uh, and a lot of that research has come out of uh, institutions linked to the UK, not necessarily UK institutions, but where UK academics are, are included in them. The UK has got an incredibly long and proud history of working in this area. Um, and... Uh, the Wellcome Trust, where we are now, the MRC uh, in particular, have funded a lot of work in this in this work in this area, and it's been spectacularly successful. Now, when it comes to international health uh, issues, where NIHR does understand uh, things pretty well is understanding the UK infrastructure. Uh, historically, it's always stuck with the English infrastructure because the Department of Health is an English body, but ODA money is a UK resource. So for the purposes of anything to do with ODA, we're doing things for all of the UK, uh, including obviously the devolved nations, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. What we'd really like to do with this call, what we decided when we uh, had this money was we decided that we would do broadly three things. We would find some uh, schemes that were ongoing where the feeling was this is an extremely good international development scheme uh, run out of the UK, uh, which is working, but which looks relatively underfunded, and other funders would like some support, and we would help to support that. And an example of that is the Joint Clinical Trials uh, Network, which DFID, uh, MRC, and Wellcome jointly do, which has proved incredibly successful. So basically to support existing things. Secondly, to set up a number of, of specific schemes, filling in areas that we felt the UK could make a contribution in terms of international development. And the third area is the scheme we're launching today, which is really quite, it's deliberately drawn quite broadly, and it is to allow UK institutions essentially to be underpinned to do research that is of importance for international development. Now, I think uh, I'm going to, I, I'm aware of the fact that there are broadly two audiences uh, we're talking to. There's an audience of people who are kind of old Africa, Asia or Latin America hands who know a lot about international development, but probably not much about NIHR. Uh, and there's a group of people who are NIHR and other academics who know relatively little about international development. Most of what I'm going to say is aimed at the second of those, uh, and a lot of what follows will be aimed at the first of those people who are kind of uh, NIHR virgins, if you see what I mean, uh, in terms of uh, this is not something they normally would apply to. Um, so for those who uh, are interested in international development but don't currently have much of a track record, the, the broad point about ODA money is that both in, uh, in regulation and in philosophy, the aim of the research has got to be to improve the lives of people in developing countries. There are two tests for whether something is ODA, uh, which is an OECD definition. It's not a UK definition, but which the UK sticks to. There's a much longer version, but the short version is the first test is it must be directly relevant to the lives of people in developing countries. And the second is it must be primarily relevant. So, for example, it is not sufficient to say a lot of people in India have diabetes, I'm working on diabetes, therefore what I do is international development. That Because that fails the principally test. If, on the other hand, you were asking the question, a lot of people who are poor in India do not have access to diabetes services, what research can we do to improve that? That firmly does fall into a both philosophically what is ODA and legally what is ODA. I think if you want an even simpler test, if you asked uh, a, an intelligent 16-year-old who's interested in international development and explained what you're doing, and they said at the end of it, well, what's that got to do with making people's be lives better in Africa, Asia, or Latin America, then probably you're in the wrong place. So basically, most things that are ODA, it's pretty obvious they're ODA, and if you're really having to strain the logic, it's probably strayed beyond the boundaries of what it should be. So that would be my first very general point. In this scheme, uh, we wanted to do two things. Uh, we firstly 
recognising the, out, the outstanding work of multiple institutions in the UK, but which are very often very project by project based. We wanted, in a sense, to underpin area, uh, institutions which have got a long track record of international development work, outstanding international development work, uh, and allow them to do things either which are new or slightly riskier, but not set very narrow boundaries about what they should do. We deliberately allowed a fair degree of flexibility. And the second thing we wanted to do was we, we recognise all of us, and including everyone who works in international development, and for those who don't know me, which are most of you, I used to be Chief Scientific Advisor in DFID, so I, I, this, is, this is home territory for me. There are some areas where the UK has got very strong academic strengths which are not used for international development. And there are some very large problems in international development which are crying out for research to be done, where the disciplines exist, but they are not done, including not done in the UK. And uh, most of you will know areas that are either in your field or about your field where that is true. It might be just a disciplinary thing that, for example, you know that the bit of research that's not there is there isn't enough anthropology to support you. Or it might be a whole subject area. For example, we all know that increasingly road traffic accidents are a very big problem in the developing world, yet the amount of research on this is relatively small compared to the need. So what we really wanted with this was to have a scheme which encouraged people who currently don't do much or any international development but do have particular skill sets to, in a sense, allow them to get started to do this kind of work. So those were the two broad aims of what we're trying to do. And that, in a sense, is what underpins it overall. Now, I think that uh, when I've talked to uh, vice chancellors and others who are, in a sense, the, uh, the buanas of the, uh, of the system, their big concern with this is when the, if this system just runs for two or three years, are we left then with a programme we can't then fund? Can you guarantee that this money will be available from DH in the long run? And the short answer is no, because uh, international, uh, because these kind of decisions are taken every spending cycle, which happens in the UK for every four or five years, and you can't guarantee things beyond that. But I can, I'm as close to guaranteeing as you can be that the money in the system will be in international development. All the political parties are signed up to 0.7% of ODA, almost uniquely in the Western world. This is apart from uh, one party, which doesn't have many MPs. Uh, all the others uh, are signed up to uh, ODA in the long run. And within that, health is taken seriously. And within that, research is taken seriously. So it is possible that this particular scheme may or may not be funded over the long term. We do not know. But I'm completely confident that the UK government will, by a variety of mechanisms, be funding ODA research in health for the foreseeable future. And therefore, in a sense, getting started in this area is not likely to lead to any institution being left high and dry. It may be, if this scheme is successful, and we think it's actually genuinely having a development impact, we would go back to Treasury and say, why don't we fund it for a further round? Uh, if it fails, if it falls flat on its face, then we won't. Uh, but I think it's very unlikely to fall flat on its face, actually. But I am confident that if you start down this path and you're not already in it, there will be support for good research that's got development impact for the foreseeable future. So I just wanted to uh, lay, lay that out. The final thing is that uh, before I hand over to, to my colleagues who are talking about how to do it, um, which is probably what the majority of you are here for, is really just to try and convey from my experience of working in the to those who've not done it, the extraordinary excitement of where we are at the moment. You know, in almost all the areas I've looked at in international development, when you look at what happened with the Millennium Development Goals, people taking enormously uh, ambitious, you know, we will reduce child mortality by, you know, 70% or more, you know, big, big choices. We've gone a very long way to these enormously big goals. Uh, the UK has done a lot to help do that. What we hope is that when we look back at this scheme 10 years, 20 years out, that some of the undoubted improvements we'll see over the next 10 to 15 years will be uh, provided by the kind of